session, we are going to create a Microsoft Teams migration project inside the Victide Migration Wiz console. And we will apply all the rights necessary on both tenants to facilitate that migration. And I'm going to take you through the, the entire process end to end and what we need to do to have a working Teams project. Now, before we just jump in and just hit create project, I do like to go and set up the things that are necessary in both tenants first. So I'm going to take you through those. I'm going to refer to the help desk article, which is on the BitTiden website, which is at the, the help.bitTiden.com, because it does have some vital information there that we're going to use to, uh, to perform these tasks. So if you do go to the help option inside the console, you will get into that help center. And what we're looking for is under the, the former migration, the Microsoft 365, and then Teams Migrations, there is a Teams Migrations FAQ. Now, this is where all that information is kept. Now, the, the ones I'm inter interested in particular are the ones here for permissions. And you can see here, what I'm after is this. Now, this will allow the uh, application access into the tenant. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have to log on to both tenants with the, the global admin. But we're just going to grab this link address here. We're going to apply that. So how we do that, we're obviously logged into the 365 tenant here. So just in another window, we can just go and hit paste and go, which will then ask us to accept these permissions. And you can see Teams full control, and it wants to be able to do this block of tasks, which we will say accept. And that will drop us back to the BitTiden um, front homepage. Now, we can check whether that's done or not. Let's close that out. In the enterprise applications, which is inside Azure, you can see we've got these two here already. If I hit a refresh now, we should see, yeah, there we go. There's the Teams full control turned up. Now, obviously, when you finish the migration, you might want to go in and take that off uh, just to remove that access. But for now, that is what we need to do in there. Now, the next thing is we've got to make sure that that migration with service account is there. Now, if you've had that created for other projects, uh, like the, the OneDrive or the SharePoint, it will use the same account, use the same security group and the like. But for purposes of this video, you can see here we have the migration with account. The difference on this one is that for a Teams migration, the, the account must have uh, a license for Teams. You, on, under OneDrive and SharePoint, it doesn't have to have any licensing applied, but in Teams, it does. So we've got to make sure we have a Teams license in there. And also we need to make sure that if we go to groups, we do have a security group set up. And you can see there's a migration with security group. And we've got to make sure that that migration with service account is a member of that. So members, you can see, yes, it is in there. So that is all set to go. We've got those, those two main things done. And now we can go ahead and create the project. Obviously, we need to go and do this in the destination tenant as well. So um, that's going to be exactly the same thing, exactly what I've done. Uh, you need to go and apply it to the target as well. But I'm just going to go back now and we can start the creation of this uh, new project. So on the front screen, we'll say create project and it will be a collaboration project. And we're going to give it a name. I'm just calling it Zeotrope Teams. I've given it that customer, which we've got set up as well. So we'll do the next step there. And now we need to set up the source and the destination endpoint. So I'm going to say new on this one and we'll just call this one Zeotrope M365 Teams. It is a team source. Then we need to give it the credentials of our service account that's where there add that and next step will be the destination so we'll do the same thing very very similar like so we'll tell it teams as a destination and we can say yes we want to do one with the document versions and metadata and we'll give it that service account that exists on the other side Like so, and we are going to use the Microsoft provided Azure storage. As you can see, it's not recommended for anything over five gig. For this demonstration, obviously, we, we've got a, a small amount of data, but you can set up the custom Azure storage and then you give it the account name and the access key in here. So if you need to do that, you can apply those, those items there. But here we just hit add and go and look at the summary. Now, we don't need to do anything in the advanced options. We don't need to tell it anything 
like I say, we did on the OneDrive and SharePoint. Teams doesn't require that. We just go straight into the Save Project here, and we are presented with the screen, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, where we can add the items for this project. And one of the nice things here is we can do the Auto Discover for Teams as well. We'll kick that off and say Start. Now, this is the first check, really, that we've got everything bound together and set up properly with that service account and with those rights that are in there. And this will just go and discover what teams that we have. So that took a few minutes to do, but you can see it's discovered one item. It's a small tenant. We've only got one team in there, but the fact that it's come up and said everything is, is looking good and it's discovered one item is obviously a good thing. So I'm going to hit import items here, and you can see it is it's just one team called distribution. So that is now ready to, to go ahead and do these this credential check. So the next check we want to do is to make sure that it can see the destination correctly as well and everything like I said before everything's bound together nicely and, and we are really good for this migration just to make sure we've got those application rights done on both sides we have that migration with service account set up with all the right licenses for it and it has the, uh, the membership of the group as well if that's all in place this one should work so we're going to hit tick box there we'll start and we'll just do a straight verify credentials same as we do on most other projects. So we'll submit that and come back in a few minutes and refresh and see how that's got on. So a few minutes later and we hit the refresh, you can see it's completed verification. So that's really everything we need to do to set up for the Teams thing. I want to take this session a little bit further and just show you how we might kick off a migration, what we need to do there. But also I want to talk a little bit about user mapping as well, because that does come up quite a lot in conversations that I have about how the user mapping really does work. And there are some tools in the background to make that a bit easier for you on this uh, migration with console. So the first thing to talk about really is we have these two team names, distribution, and it will end up being called distribution on the target side. But what if you want to call it something else? Uh, it might be a, a name conflict you've got already and you just want to, to, to call it something completely different. Well, we can, we just hit, before we do the migration, obviously, we hit the pencil here. And we might want to just call that distribution team. You can't put any spaces in, so remember that. But it's just distribution team there, and we'll just save that item, and that will take effect. So when we do the migration, it will create the different name for us. Now, when we kick off a migration, what we're going to do is we'll hit the toggle button here, and we say start and do a full migration. Now, we've got some options in here, but what I want to show you is there's some steps that we need to go through to make this work. We need to do it in various passes. So the first pass we're going to do really is this one here, setting up Teams, Teams Creation. I mean, the console does tell you really what you should be doing, but I want to just reiterate where, where that is. So you can see setting up Teams, Teams Creation, we call this the scaffolding pass, and it will just build the team and, and put the framework around it so it will exist in the target tenant. Now, once we've done that, we will go across then and do the migration of data. But I'm just going to run this setup for Teams now and actually start that migration and kick that off so we can get into the, the next items and show you those as well. And while that's doing that, I do want to come back to the talking about the users. Now, you'll notice in the migration and all the way through this, it hasn't talked at all about the users and the user mapping and really what goes on there. Because you may have situations in Teams where you might have uh, Robert Smith on one side and he wants to be called Bob Smith on the other. Now, the, the, the way the migration works is it would take everybody that's a member of the distribution team, take the prefix of their UPN. So in, in this case, it might be, um, you know, uh, let's say Bob Smith, and he wants to be, let's suppose he's going to be Robert Smith on the other side. It's going to create Bob Smith, but it's not going to find Bob Smith on the target tenant. So he's not going to become a member. So we need a way that we can do that. So if I go back to that help desk article, have a look here and if you scroll down the article you'll find this part which says how to apply user mapping for a large number of users now i'm not going to actually go through and do this but i wanted to point this out because it's a very useful thing to have what you need to have is the the bit side and sdk which you'll download and install there and there's a script at the bottom of this article which as it says there is is teams user mapping and what you do is you create the the csv file and you put the source and the destination for the user mapping in the csv file and really you're just then connecting with the, the SDK and running that script with the project ID. And you can see where the project ID comes from in the top there and give it your CSV path. And it will go and apply all of that user mapping 
in the back end of the migration of this tool. And then of course you just run the migration as you would like to. And Bob becomes Robert and it, everybody's actually happy with that. Now the nice thing is if you do make any changes to that CSV file, just rerun the script. Run it straight over the top and any changes you make will go over the top of that, adding new people in. Just rerun the whole thing over the top and there you go. So that's done. It's created that scaffolding pass. So what we'll do is I'm just going to bring up the target tenant. This is here. And we're just going to hit a, a refresh on this. And we should see a distribution team in there. And there we go. Look at that. And what you may be surprised to see is the fact that it's still called distribution as a title, but it's actually the distribution team down here is what we've changed. That is the, the actual architecture of the, the team is based on the UPN, which is here. So that's really what that renaming does. So if you do need to change the name, by all means, just go ahead and we can actually just change it in here. There's a space. Now you remember I didn't put a space in, in the, the team rename, and that's because the rename is this part here. So we can just go and apply that if we wanted to, and that is that is all good. But now what I want to do is just press play again, and we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, migration of data between them. So we're just clicking it again, and hit the start for the full migration. And you can see that we are now do migrate data. Now what it's recommending is that we do conversations, documents, Elixir documents there, and the versioning, any metadata, document permissions here. Yes, it can cause it to be a little slow. Document permissions do take a little bit longer to go, and we'll turn that off. So really, what we're grabbing here is these, these main items. So documents, metadata, versions, document permissions, and the conversations. So we hit the start and let that run through. Now for testing purposes, I'm keeping an eye on how this is going on both the source and the target. So let me show you what that's uh, being submitted. This is logged in as John Smith on the Zeotrib side so we can see what his team looked like. So you can see he's got a, he's a very small team. He's got a channel there with just two messages and he's got one file in there. It is obviously very, very small, but um, what I'm expecting to see is obviously this data to come over into the target. Now. At the moment, we haven't applied any uh, memberships. So if we look at his account on this side over here, you'll see he's actually just a member of one team. He's not a member of distribution yet, and he can't see anything. So this is his account inside the target tenant, and there is uh, not much happening as we would expect until the point where that membership comes through and everything should come to life. So we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll show you when that goes through. Alrighty, so that pass is completed. Now, if we go and click in any of these items here, you can see what it's done. If you're inquisitive about exactly how much data it's moved and, and what it's done in certain areas, this is going to give you a good uh, synopsis of what is going on. So, not much in that channel, as we know, but uh, you can see how that might be helpful. So, let's just go back up here and we're going to do a final pass now, which is going to start adding people into the team. Now, this is the one you might want to schedule for later. Uh, maybe a weekend or uh, depending on the migration you're doing, but uh, there is an option to do scheduling down the bottom. So here we're just going to do the migrate data, and all we're going to do here is the Teams and Channels memberships and the planner. Now that scheduling is actually down here a little bit. We can say if we want to schedule it for a particular time, we can certainly do that. But in this case, we're just going to do these, these two and kick that off and come back and see what that looks like shortly. And there we go, we have that final pass completed. So we once again have a quick look in here and you can see we've got ticks and no, no errors across the whole migration, which is good to see. What I will do is just drag through that uh, destination logon and you can see, yep, now uh, John Smith is now a member of the distribution team in general. And you can see there's some messages from the previous tenant. It does flag them that they are from the previous tenant, but they're still usable. You can still reply them, what have you here. And in the files and other tabs, there's the file that's come across too. So 
I would put that migration down to being successful and uh, completed. So a quick recap on this session. What we had to do was set up the application permissions, which we grabbed that uh, control from that help center, uh, applied those permissions to both tenants. We then created the migration with service account, made sure that had a license that had access to Teams. It doesn't need to be uh, an admin of any sort. It just needs to have that license. The, the admin requirement is based on the application permissions. So that's great. Um, then we also had to make sure it was a member of the Direct security group, and we were able to then do the uh, auto discover, bring the teams in, change a name if necessary, and bring over that, that data from one tenant to another. And also the mapping of the users. If they needed to be changed, there's the, uh, the script on that. Let me show you where that script is in the uh, help desk article, too. So, as I said, it talks about it in that article, which, uh, which you saw, but it's actually right down, oh, excuse me, making everyone's eyes go funny. But if you go right down the bottom, there it is. And that is the example of CSV and then the other uh, PowerShell scripts which you would need to perform those tasks. So uh, with all that, thank you for watching. Hope that was helpful and we will talk to you again soon.